Hey, sixth grade violin players, Miss Kettle Camp here. Um, I'm here to make a video for you about how to play this song. It's called Hunters of Avatar. If you went to Fres last year, um, you might recognize it because we were planning on performing it for our final concert, but then we couldn't. So hopefully we can do something with it this year. Um, it's super fun to play and um, yeah, I think you'll all really like it. I hope you're having fun practicing high hopes because that one's also really super fun to play. So for Hunters of Avatar, you might notice that in the very beginning of it, you've got these like weird crossed out notes and it says stomp foot. So it literally means they want you to stomp your foot for two beats. See, we've got beat, beat, rest, and then TT, okay? Um, and then there's another funny crossed out note over here and it says to yell. So you literally get to yell right there. You get to go, hey, okay? Um, and it doesn't say it over here for the second time, but you do stomp your feet for these two beats. So it should say right there, it should say stomp, stomp, and then you yell again over here. So I'll just show you what the first line is like. Actually, I'll play the first two lines for you. Um, the notes that you actually have to play on your violin are the E and the A string together. So the first thing you should practice with this is just doing that. So we're gonna go TT with the E and the A like that. Um, if you're having trouble doing the E and the A together, just pick one and do it. So we could go like, or you could do, but if you want a little challenge, try them both together. They should be really short and um, strong sounding, okay? So here's the first two lines of Hunters of Avatar. I'm gonna count myself in, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Rest. One, two, hey, rest. Rest. One, two, hey, rest. Rest. One, two, hey, rest. Rest. One, two, three, four. Now, I was counting the beats out loud for you so that you could um, understand how those rests work but I'll play it one more time, and this time I won't count out loud. You just have to follow along in your music so you know where those rests are gonna be. Okay, I'll count myself in, and then I won't count anymore. One, two, three, four. Hey. Rest. Hey. Hey. So that's a good way you can practice that and you can count in your head for sure if that helps. I was kind of trying to count in my head. All right, we get a melody at number nine and it sounds like this. It goes. right there at 17. Um, so the melody is pretty straightforward. It's all notes that are on your D string. So, and, and there are a few helpful little hints here. So like it has a number one there, which I'm sure many of you know that means one finger, one finger on the D string. So it goes like E, 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 D, E, E, E. And then there's a three there. So that means you gotta play your three fingers, which is a G. Now, this little thing that says H2, sometimes um, string players, violin and viola players, when you put your two, like where the F sharp is or the C sharp on the tape, um, they call it a high two. So that's what the H2 stands for. Sometimes you might also see a L2 or a low two. A low two would just be pulling it back to make a natural on either of those strings. So this one says high two just to remind you to play F sharp right there. Okay, and again, it says it here too. It says H2. That means you're going to play that note is a high two on your G string. Because see how low it is? It's like really super low down on the staff. So it's an H2. It's called a B because it's two fingers on your G string. 
The tricky part here is that you've got to make sure you count all of these beads because there's a whole bunch of them you have to play. I would count it like this. I would go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? Um, that might help you keep track of them. Or you can just remember that there are eight in this measure and then another eight in this measure. And then you just have to count these Ds here. So now I will play for you at 17. So here's 17 in Hunters of Avatar. One, two, three, four. counting my one and two and three and four ands when I had all those B's again. So now we have some different stuff at 25. We have a rhythm change, so watch out. Instead of um, doing a bunch of T T T T T T's, we've got ta T T ta T T. So here's 25 for you. One, two, 25, go. is that there are some dots on these notes, some of these notes. And you might remember that those dots have a special name. They're called staccato. Staccato just means you play them really short. So if you notice, while I was playing it um, with my bow, I was kind of doing it really short, like instead of like just put a little space between your notes. Okay, now at 31, this is maybe my favorite part of the song. I don't know, it's really cool. It's like this nice um, melody here. So here's 31, the first note, that D has three beats. So you gotta make sure you count all the way to three. So like, one, two, three. here so I can turn the page. You'll notice I'm not playing short here. I'm playing with my notes really connected and really smooth, okay? I think that's kind of the character of this, this section. So now I turn the page and here's 39. I have to play a whole note here. So hopefully you remember that a whole note you have to count for four beats. So here's 39. Three, four. One, two, three, four. going to stop right there at 47 because this song is a little bit long and there's a few more things I want to show you but I'm going to I'm going to make a part two for you so have fun practicing this try to practice up to 47 with some of these little hints that I gave you and I'm excited to work on this in your lessons with you